Oh, thank you for coming today. I really appreciate it. And uh, as I said, we just got done having a team meeting. We go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We, we lift and run and do all that. And then Wednesday, we do some kind of type of uh, performance education, whether it might be uh, nutrition or how we do want to do things better in the weight room or training room or whatever the case may be. And, you know, because we're, we're all, it's kind of a feeling out process. I, as soon as we got done, uh, you know, I took the job and I hit the road running and then and the kids all left for Christmas break and then I came back, I hit the road running. I, I haven't got a chance to meet these guys as much as I want to, so I'm excited that we're in a dead period. That's a really neat name for what our recruiting period is right now, but I, I can't go out and neither can my coaches, so it really gives us a chance to, to develop some relationships with these guys. Hey, we signed a couple of... Uh, I think uh, impactful type players. You know, every you know, the, the real signing day has has become the one in December. Obviously, and not very many schools are you know are signing you know a lot of guys uh, on in the what was the old signing day. Uh, you know, more so probably Division Two or one Double A. Signed quite a few guys. I know when I was at some other spots we did, but uh, Jamarian Burnett. Uh, you know, he goes by Fat, P-H-A-T is kind of his nickname. I wasn't quite sure what his real name was after talking to him quite a few times. I thought it was Fat and Jamarian, but he, he's a, a, a great signee for us. You know, he's the number 10 overall prospect in the state of Alabama. He's a big guy, uh, great movement, great speed. Uh, we're excited to have him. We got him in uh, this last weekend. Uh, he, he had some legit offers. I don't like to get into he was offered by this school at school. You know, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. Who knows? There's, I've been heard some guys, you know, he turned down a Houston offer, and I didn't even know what the kid's name was. You know, but this guy, he had some legit offers, uh, I believe, and, uh, you know, we're, we're excited about having him come to the program. He brings size, speed, movement at the running back position. You like to have a big guy back in there who, who can uh, slam it up inside and, and he also does a good job catching the ball. So uh, we're pumped about having him in our program. Uh, Coach Etheridge and, and uh, Jordy Joseph really you know, spearheaded his recruitment and did an excellent job with it. Uh, the other guy that we signed today is Liam, Liam Doherty. I've only talked to him a few times on the phone. He didn't have a chance to come over here and visit. He's, there's a, 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 a group called Aussie Kicking over in Australia. And I've had a lot of luck with Australian kickers. I, I had a couple of really good ones at Sam Houston State many years ago, one of whom I'm not sure if he's still playing in the NFL or not, Lachlan Edwards, but uh, got a couple of really good guys from there. And then uh, I had a really good guy at, at Tul Tulane this last season play for us that we got connected with through Aussie kicking. And that's the same thing with Liam. Uh, we've got a guy over there that we've, talk to quite a bit and we trust him. Uh, it's difficult because uh, a lot of these guys, they've never put a helmet on before, you know, and, but they do American kicking and most of them can also do some movement kicking rugby style where you're moving to your right or to your left, depending on whether they're right footed or left footed. Uh, so he's, uh, he, he's going to be different because he's a left footed punter. I, I think that's every time that we play a left footed punter, you know, you try to get that jugs machine to go the other direction, and it just, it's hard to replicate that. And uh, you try to find somebody, I've always tried to have a, at least a walk-on guy or someone who's a left-footed punter, and it's hard to find them. There's not very many of them out there. So uh, hopefully that will, uh, you know, be an advantage for us as well. And he also has played other sports, which also opens up some, you know, fake possibilities with the guys. You can run a little bit. And, you know, he's avoided guys when he's played, you know, what they call rugby over there and rugby here as well, or what do they call it over there, Australian football? Is that what it is? So he's he's good athlete. He's not just a, a guy that's going to be just a stationary dude back in there all the time. So, you know, just kind of looking overall, the combined signing class, you know, he signed 36 guys, got in here late, uh, didn't have very many high school guys that, had, uh, that were committed to U of H. And then we didn't want to reach and grab guys we didn't think were, you know, power four, 
football players, but uh, 22 are transfer guys, and uh, either from junior college or from uh, the portal, and then 14 high school guys, and only three of those are early enrollees. We're going to try to get on top of this and get more early enrollees, if at all possible, because it really helps you having those guys go through spring football with you. Uh, 18 of the guys are offensive guys. We tried to hit some positions that we needed some help, primarily on the offensive side of the ball. Offensive line, we needed some guys. Uh, and then defensively, felt like we needed some help at the DB and, and uh, defensive line position. We signed seven defensive linemen and six defensive backs. And we also signed you know, the punter uh, that we talked about, Liam, here a moment ago. And then also uh, I brought in a long snapper uh, as well, uh, who had been with us at, uh, at uh, Tulane, who was a walk-on over there, and he got in the portal. We were fortunate enough to get him over here. So uh, that's a little bit about today and overall. And uh, you know, we've had a very, very good reception across the state. You know, our focus is going to be on the state of Texas. We kind of divided up uh, ten different ways to recruit the greater Houston area. And then obviously we're also recruiting the whole state of Texas. And we're going to get into Louisiana as well. Uh, uh, Houston has signed some great players uh, from the state of Louisiana. I saw one of them, he's a tall guy that used to play basketball here years, years ago. Talking about Elvin Hayes, right? Uh, I know uh, the Stevenson guy, he caused us fits a few years ago and we played against him when I was at Tulane. So that's going to be our primary area right there is going to be this, you know, the state of Texas, uh, really trying to, uh, I think it's an advantage when you can drive places. I, I did not get on a plane the whole month of January recruiting. I was driving to all my different spots. And uh, I just think that's a huge advantage, you know, to, to be able to have great players within driving distance. And, uh, you know, I haven't had that. I didn't have that at Tulane. You know, Louisiana was a smaller state and we weren't able to sign enough guys who could play big time, you know, Division One football. So we had to, you know, get on planes and go all over the place, different places. We're going to be able to drive to the kids that we're recruiting here in the state of Texas and also over in Louisiana when we get over there as well. But uh, the reception that we've gotten from the high school coaches has been tremendous. Uh, you know, a lot of guys I've just rekindled relationships with, and, and I've, I've been going around speaking at all sorts of different events. I'm not great with social media, taking pictures and sending it out. I need to do a better job of that. Uh, but I've, I think I've spoken to six different high school associations or clinics so far, and I'm going to do three more next week. I'm doing one this coming Friday night. Uh, so I'm excited about that. I, I want them to know that, uh, that we're going to be recruiting, you know, the, this great state. And, uh, and also I want to develop these relationships so they know that when they send a kid our direction, we're going to do a great job of developing them as a person, as a student, and also as a player, which is so important. Talk a little bit about spring ball. Our spring game is going to be Saturday, April the 13th. I want you guys to know that we're going to send out a practice schedule. You are welcome to come to every practice. Love having you there, all right? Only thing I request is please do not video 11 on 11 and send it out someplace, all right? It's just kind of zero in a little bit on a few dudes, but I love having you out. Uh, Post-practice availability with myself, with the student athletes is going to be every day, my coaches, however you want to do it. You know, we want, uh, you know, we want to be Houston's... Uh, college football team and, and you know I know that you guys have covered U of H a lot and uh, you know we're going to have open doors here so please come on out I'm uh, doing an event with all the former lettermen on uh, April the 12th okay that's the night before the spring game uh, one of the things that I didn't realize being new is how many Houston alums are coaching I mean, they're all over the place. You know, there's a couple schools I went into. They had four former players that were coaching at the school. And uh, so that's really neat. And, uh, but I want them to know that, you know, this might be a little different than some jobs I've taken. Houston has had some great teams. And it hasn't been that long ago. 
you know, and, and uh, we want to celebrate that. We want the, those guys to feel a part of the program, and I, I enjoy meeting former, you know, student athletes. I also, we just got done talking in our team meeting about career services and guys, you know, getting internships and jobs. We've got way over 300,000 Houston alums in the greater Houston area, and then there's all these players as well. We want these guys to help our guys find that first job. You know, if you have a good first job, you're, you're, you're cooking with grease, you're going to get a great second job or third job. So we want to utilize those guys as, as uh, uh, role models and mentors to our current student athletes. Something I do that's a little different on Saturday morning of the spring game, I have the former players sit in their position meeting. Uh, group, you know, they were running back. They sit with in with the running backs, wide receiver. They sit in with the wide receivers, develop a little bit of relationship, but also talk about you know the, the positive things that they did when they were in college and some things maybe they wish they would have done a little different. You know, maybe uh, utilizing career services or uh, to doing some internships, things like that. And uh, uh, and then also I like those guys to sit in there and watch uh, and listen to the meeting. And they see how complicated football has become. It has really changed. You know, I've been coaching since 1982, a couple of years ago, and it's totally different from 1982 or, or when I played to how it is now. And I, I think it's kind of eye-opening uh, to these guys. And they kind of see, you know, wow, you know, these, these are sharp dudes to be able to know all, uh, process all this information and take it out in the field. We're also going to have a coaching clinic on Friday, April the 4th. And then uh, uh, April 5th, that Saturday, they'll come out and watch us practice. You know, I've got an open door policy with coaches, man. Everything that I know, I stole from somebody. I'm, I'm being honest about it. And, uh, you know, and uh, I, I, I'm going to go, I go out to clinics. I'm going to one Friday night, you know, I'm speaking at it. And, and uh, the next week, I'm going up to Dallas to a coaching clinic that I'm speaking at as well. I'm, I'm going to go to some other universities that I want to learn from. You know that have similar type footprint as University of Houston. You know, so uh, uh, you know we're going to have all these coaches in here and and uh, get them to know us and trust us and and uh, and learn football from them too. I I, you know, I go in and it's amazing uh, how uh, organized and structured Texas high school football is. You know, and, and their off season programs. There's nothing like it in the country. There really isn't. And uh, uh, so that, those are some of the things we're going to do in spring ball. And if you all have any questions for me, I'd love to answer them. Go ahead and open up questions. Kind of ramble for a while. Willie, really, what was the, um, <clears throat> maybe sort of when you got here, the, the roadmap to how you didn't have a lot of time to jump into recruiting, but sort of what you wanted to accomplish in, in such a compacted amount of time? Well, it's difficult when you take over a new job and, and with these uh, recruiting dates that you have, you know, and, and uh, you know, so there were some things I needed to do here with, with uh, press conferences and, you know, uh, NIL events and, you know, different things like that. But again, it's, you know, I, I don't know if I, 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 you know, probably each week I've got stuff at night five or six times a week. You know, it's like last night. You know, I, I want to support our other teams. You know, and I came out and watched uh, 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 the Cougars play. I didn't see Kel Kelvin for the whole ball game, but I, I saw him, and he, he just does a fantastic job. I've, uh, and I can't wait until he slows down or I get a chance to sit down and talk to him and pick his brain about some things. Uh, you know, because uh, that's something that I use in recruiting. You know, hey, we want to be a nationally prominent football program and all I got to do is show them the example of our, you know, our basketball team and what they're accomplishing, you know, so uh, I, I'm looking forward to, to, to talking with him and, and picking his brain and, and all the coaches on staff. I've been, there's a few of them that are in season right now and Coach Blackburn, a track coach, Coach Rear, who is our volleyball coach, who's done a great job. You know, he's a former Blinn Buck also. He coached there as well and you know, just kind of see see some of the, you know, things they wish you know they would have done differently maybe when they started here. So, uh, yeah, the recruiting part is trying to get out and, and 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 you know one of the things I try to do is go places where they've got 
you know, bona fide Division I student athletes with character who can play at the Power Four level. You know, it's been good. I've, I've gone in some high schools and, you know, the coaches have told me, I don't know if he's quite your level. You know, and that's been, been good. You know, they're, 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 they're very honest here. You know, just like when the pro scouts, scouts come in, I'm very honest as well. You know, I went over to uh, Mobile one day for the Senior Bowl, and you know, it was was uh, you know, it's I, I probably talked to I don't know how many scouts, you know, uh, from general managers to you know just a, a a scout who's beating the bushes, and I talked to him, you know, I could talk to him in greater detail about the kids who played for me last year, but it was also neat to watch uh, Patrick Paul and Nelson Cesar and see how well thought of they are with the pro scouts. So I, yeah, I've been all over the place. It's been, it's been fun. I enjoy it. I, I love coaching. I love recruiting. You know, so it's, uh, it's been fun. Next question. Coach, what's your plan for the staff for the next month until spring ball starts? Well, there, there's uh, the NCAA allows you to do a little bit of stuff with your team right now. So, you know, they, they give you two hours a week where you can actually have a football. And uh, you can't do anything competitive, you know, offense versus defense or DBs versus, you know, uh, wide receivers. But, you know, it's going to give us a chance to install, you know, so, uh, schematically what we're going to do offense, defense, special teams. So I'm looking forward to that. They're going to be meeting a bunch. Because, you know, our offensive staff, there's a couple of them that have been together for a while, but not a bunch of them. And then defensively, same thing. I, I'm getting ready to hire a defensive line coach. I, uh, I was hoping it would be done today, but I still got to cross T's, dot I's, and hopefully it'll be done this evening when I have that event. But uh, I've had man, a, a bunch of people that have applied I want to come here and coach at the University of Houston. I've had so many of them tell me, Coach, it's a sleeping giant, you know, there at the University of Houston. I believe that as well. Uh, so uh, I think some of you may end up knowing the person. So I, I just got to wait. I'll just leave it at that. But uh, our staff is, is really getting together offense, defense, special teams-wise. And, uh, and then also something I do a little different. We, we didn't go out Mondays recruiting. We stayed in here with the players. I had the offensive staff in there while Coach Hester, I think he's the best strength coach in the nation, was working those guys out. And the defensive coaches would be in there with the, the defensive kids while they were working out just to start to accelerate the relationship building. That's so important. You know, I'm, I was a strength coach for 15 years. I love going in there. You know, so I, I'm, I'll be in the weight room every day. Part of that is for me to get to know the guys. I said so that's some of the things we've done with our, our staff. Defensive line coach you're hoping to hire is it somebody that's been around your program the last few years? Uh, no. Okay. Has it been? Willie, the, the the three coaches that we spoke to yesterday, assistant mentioned uh, that they all have a piece of Houston, and, and you mentioned dividing up the ten. Um, some of them in previous jobs have recruited there is. Were you strategic in sort of how you wanted to move guys around? You know, it's hard to do that. You know, maybe a guy's got a relationship with somebody in, you know, uh, north of the city. Somebody's got a relationship with someone south of the city. So it, but we wanted it to, you know, geographically where it went into the area that they also had. So if a guy had central Texas, he was kind of a little bit more of the northwest part of the city. If he was going up to Dallas, he was kind of going a little more north. Is he? You know, East Texas, he was going that direction, et cetera. But uh, I, I just think it's good, you know, you know, you got, no one can recruit the city of Houston by themselves. <laughs> so it's just not, it's not possible, you know. So uh, we, we divided it up 10 ways just so, hey, like, I want to get, get these guys to, I'm going to tell them, all, hey, we're going to see uh, how many guys get coaches that come to the coaching clinic. You know, how, how many of them come from your area? You know, so that, that should challenge them to call guys in their area about, hey, come on over, you know, uh, Friday night the 4th and, and get them over here. Uh, but, yeah, we, 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 we didn't, you know, you know, something we'd do on Monday, too, is we'd have a staff meeting. We'd go over where everybody was going that week, and we'd talk about, you know, the schools that you were going to. 
you know, and uh, something that was neat for me is I got a bunch of former players that are coaching all over the state of Texas and all over. So maybe someone was going to Dallas and I say, hey man, these two dudes that are coach of this school played for me and blah, 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 and this guy played for me here. And, you know, and, and that's why I went to the region uh, five meeting the other day. All the head coaches and assistant coaches and ADs were at that meeting and it was neat. I had, you know, probably 10 guys that played for me someplace, either primarily Sam Houston or playing that were coaching. Got to rekindle those relationships. Coach, you've obviously had a lot of recruiting years that you've done. With the situation you're at now, how happy are you with this class of recruits with everything that's gone on so fast, so furious? How happy are you with this class? That I, I, I thought our coaches did a great job putting it together. You know, and, and when, when you recruit, it's not just the coaches. You know, it's the... Uh, recruiting office they did a fantastic job it's uh you know our our, our on-campus recruiting coordinator our uh you know our academic people you know and, and uh, you know we're, our doors were open every day there you know i may get done recruiting and a kid's coming in on unofficial that evening and that's the only time we can get them in and the academic person has to come in and talk to him or the strength coach or whatever it might be. Uh, sometimes it's if we feel like having the nutritionist in there would be an advantage, we do it. You know, so for the short amount of time we had, I thought we did a fantastic job. You know, most of January was devoted to 2025 recruiting. You know, uh, you know, as you can see, we only signed two guys. You know, everybody else was signed on the, the first signing period. So uh, that, that was just getting ready really for uh, getting guys to come in and march and watch us practice in the spring. You know, we got highly organized, competitive practice. I think kids will enjoy coming in and watch. The coaches will come in and enjoy watching us practice. I, I always love it. You know, I get a lot of compliments from pro scouts about how we practice and, and the organization and the effort and intensity of the practice. You know, so we're, uh, you know, we're, we're always recruiting. That's part of this game. If, you know, you, you don't like recruiting, it's going to be difficult for you. Willie, the portal guys that you signed, is there an area that you feel like you made some ground that you can sort yeah, of... Yeah, I thought we did. Up? I thought we could have signed a, a couple of really good tight ends, you know, and we needed to. You know, I, I, I thought we did a great job with offensive line and DBs. We needed to. We had some good players at those positions. Just didn't have much depth, and we needed, you know, defensive line. We needed two as well, you know, and and uh, you know we're, we're uh, you know we go through the process properly. When someone enters the portal, that's when we and we and we watch them, and we feel like they could contribute. That's when we start recruiting them. That was a little dig at some people. Coach. Uh... Will you guys have some spots held over for? Do you, will, do you have any more spots to hand out? Yeah. Is that going to depend on how the portal goes? Yes. You know, and, and uh, you know, I've I had some people. They, they you know, they, they they're, they're looking at every place else in case a guy's enters the portal. That's code for we're, we're recruiting that dude, in my opinion. Right. So we, we, when they get in, though. If, you know, if we, we lose a guy and it's a position, we you know, we got we to find somebody who gets in the portal. And, or, and you know, I, I hope that's not the case. I hope we do a great job of, you know, establishing a culture here where our guys feel like, you know, they can thrive and grow and person, student, player. You know, and that, that's what we're wanting to accomplish over the next few months. Uh, I, I'm proud of the fact we lost very few guys at, at Tulane. Did a good job with our culture and, and – uh, you know, so, yeah, that's part of it. You know, high school, you know, it, probably not, you know, but uh, that's going to be looking toward 2025. Well, yesterday, Sean Bell said that when, when he was considering here that you told him to come on over, drive around, take a look, sort of uh, see what was, you know, what, yeah. what was all, what, what was it important kind of with him to, 
to sort of have him before he made a decision? Well, I think there's a misconception about the area around U of H. You know, I really do. I, I mean, I think it's I think this campus is unreal. You know, what, what our president has done in the last 17 years is really impressive. And I've coached around here for a long period of time. It's interesting, you know, shoot, I'm, I'm staying in a place about five, 10 minutes away. You know, so it's, uh, you know, I just think it's, it's great to, you know, see everything the city of Houston and also U of H has done, you know, here. You know, so I'm, I'm, I th I, that was the reason why I told him, hey, drive around, check it out. You know, this is, uh, I think it's, as I told you before, this is where I came for vacation in the last few years. Now, primarily, I just come visit my daughters. But they both, both were living here at the time. But any, anywhere I was at, I was coming here, and I, I love the city of Houston. So does the wife make you find a new vacation spot now? I, I, I guess we'll just stay here. My vacation last summer was Lake Conroe. That's where we came over earlier. You know. So that was the one area that we were away from uh, from Houston. But yeah, we, we love the city. Anybody else? A few more questions. Um, is the plumber, uh, and I ask this because the last one we've got, we've had an ice cream salesman uh, with Dane Roy and a couple. Is he a little older or is he, is that a discriminatory? I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure. You know, he's a very mature talking kid, you know, but uh, I'm not sure. I, you know, most of those guys, I, I think high school gets done for them, just from my experience, when they're 19, I believe. They, they, so they go a little longer than we do here in America, but uh, I'm not sure that's a good, good question. I'll find out.